Hello everybody, Bubble Zest here and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video we're going to be doing a guide to the achievement, the Big Entente. So, let's get started. First things first, research slots. It's standard electronics, industry and so on. Next up, let's create an intelligence agency. Always useful. Now we're going to change our garrison law over. We're democratic so we can use local autonomy. For our sieves, it's just going to be mill spam. And for our actual mules and dockyards, it's going to be weapons and convoy spam. Next up, let's gather up the army and place it into some equal stacks. 23 colonial templates. Better break them off. Something like this will do for now. Next up, we're going to immediately promote Jean Tassingui to Field Marshal. We have just enough command power to do so. Now let's gather up the navy and place it in Calais. There we go. It will gather itself up. And that is pretty much all of our prep out of the way. So now all that's left to do now is our focus, revive in the national block, and go up to speed 5, and begin. I'm going to be upgrading cryptology, breaking Germany's cipher will be a welcome bonus. Now we've revived the national block, let's go for Laissez Faire. Laissez Faire is the main reason we went for the national block. This industry boost is very, very good. Hmm, communist to government? Sure, I'd rather have that than the stab hit. And yes, I'm not going to use the boost to something like improve machine tools. This will slow us down a tiny bit from being able to get construction tool and improve machine tools, but it'll be fine. It will be. But there are plenty of other things we can research at this time. Radio is always a good thing to get anyway. This event is funny. I wanted this event to fire when we did loyalty to the cause a few months ago, but it never did. It would have saved us a focus or two. So it's funny seeing it here. And now let's remind the eastern countries we're not going to abandon them this time. Anyway, let's go for the silent workhorse. It means we at least have some political power coming in as France. 0 0.7 isn't much, but it's better than none. Anyway, 100 political power. Let's go for the cavalry experts. Small amount of XP coming in, but better than no amount of XP coming in. Just going to hold this research stock for a few days, because we're going to use our boost to disperse free. There we go, I can go for everything else without trouble. Let's get this little entente started. Let's strengthen it to two. Come on Czechoslovakia, you know you want to join. Ah good, our spies on 100%, let's put them on quiet intel network. we reactivate it when we go to war with Germany. And there we go, little entente, and the Czechs immediately join. Let's see if we can't get the British as well. I'm going to play safe on this one, I'm going to improve relations with them. Sometimes when I've done the Strezza front down here, I've seen Britain reject it, so I assume the reverse is true for the little entente. I'd rather spend a little bit of political power and ensure we get them, than not and have to restart. 30 command power, let's go for the army logistics specialist. Funny how he costs more than the cavalry guy and gives less XP. So Britain, do you want to rejoin the Entente? Very nice. Now let's make a small detour from the little Entente focuses to strengthen government. Ah uh, good, we have a positive amount of infantry equipment now. So now I'm going to train up 10 of these colonial templates. And since these templates are so similar, let's give them some different icons. There we go. These 10 divisions that we're training will be on the Maginot line. Yeah, they're very small templates, but level 10 forts, Germany ain't pushing through them. So may as well just have a few to cover the line, be safe. And that means we don't have to waste good units on there too. Let's really get the stability coming in by improving working conditions as well. And now let's go back to the little entente. Let's get Poland involved. 35 XP, so it's that time again. Pro Officer Corps. Additional benefit as well, it gives more command power. Considering how little war support we have as France, that's pretty useful. And hello Poland. Next up, Yugoslavia. Uh, they have been a bit finicky, so yet again I'm going to play safe and improve relations with them. Alright, it's time to reorganise the army. Because you can see here, it's kind of a mess right now. So many extra templates. We need to standardise this a bit. So we need to choose our main standard division, which will be the division colonial. It's quite good, but we can make it a little better. So let's add infantry and artillery. And let's redesignate it off from a colonial to infantry. There we go. 
These 32 Brigade Colonials can stay as they are. They're mostly British holding against Germany and Italy. They're fine. These 20 Divisions Infantry will have to be changed. So will the Cavalry. So will these Tank Divisions. This Tank Division is actually alright though. There they go. And now exercise. We're keeping the motorised because they're good for exploiting gaps. I know we could have used the Cavalry for that, but I'd rather use motorised today. I could have modified the division inventory, but it would have cost us a tiny bit more XP because I would have removed the engineers. Engineers are nice, but they're very expensive, and to be honest, I don't think they're going to be necessary to win today. Ah, good. We have 30 command power, so let's give Tasangi some traits. Offensive doctrine and charismatic. We're not actually going to be saving command power to give him either aggressive assault or organization first. We are going to need at least one force attack right now. So unfortunately, we can't give him the final traits today. So, does Yugoslavia want to join the club? Very good. Next step, Romania. Romania loves us, so I think we'll be fine. Let's hire this Hawk. More war support means more command power. We may be able to give Tasingi his final trait, but for now, like I said, we're going to be saving to get a force attack. Right, now I'm going to train up one more army. So 24 of the Division Colonial. There we go. Yeah, we'll get the equipment in time. The main problem is actually the artillery, believe it or not. Yugoslavia requests sale of airplanes. Fair enough. Have some fighters. It also reduces our consumer goods. Speaking of which, I'm going to build a supply hub here. And a naval base here. I don't expect to be fighting Italy, but if we do end up fighting them, this will give us good supply around there. Romanian democracy is fragile. You don't say. They're an absolute monarchy right now. So Romania, what do you say? Nice. I guess it isn't much of a little entente anymore, it's more of a um, medium entente. Anyway, what's this other event? Hungary demands the right to rearm? Nope. Anyway, now for our focus, let's do foreign guest workers. It will remove one of France's most annoying national spirits, full employment. Every new ally we get is one new border Germany has to cover, so if we didn't have Yugoslavia, Germany wouldn't have to cover Slovenia, and so on. So it's good that we've gotten absolutely everyone. Nice. Now let's get some more mills by beginning rearmament. I mean, we began it years ago, but hey, more mills is good. And there we go. Let's reorganise this production line a little bit. Ten factories will remain in infantry equipment, but the rest into artillery. Yeah, these guys aren't going to get their artillery for some time, so let's just deploy them. I'm going to put them in Britain for now. I'll send them to Germany when we need to. And hey, we built our supply hub, so we can finally move some of our divisions around Italy. The 16 will be on the Savoy Italian border, while 8 will be in Libya, Tunisia. Nice. Alright, it's 70 days until Tudetanland, so we can either do the Blonde Viterre proposal, or Aggressive Focus. More cause, more attack. More cause, more attack. More attack. Anyway, finally. Aggressive Assaulter. Alright, time for the plan to take Germany. We're not going through the Maginot Line, that's just not going to work. We are going to be naval invading Germany around Hamburg and Wilhelmshaven. A few naval invaders around here will really spread out the front line, and we can push down. So let's do those now. And yep, it's going to be De Gaulle. Maybe in this world he'll be renowned for naval invasions. I don't know. And I'm going to also make good use of the naval invasion exploit today. By that I mean we're going to have more naval invasions than we can actually do. But once these naval invasions leave, I'm going to delete their orders and then do some more naval invasions. To see how these naval invasions are full, what's going to happen is once these ones that are active go, we're going to delete them and then assign units to them and we will just have a load of naval invasions going. We should have a very, very long front line. Not the least because of our allies. But anyway, we're going to send unit support now. And before I forget, strike force in all relevant Z zones. And yeah, even the Air Force may as well assign them to the Gaul. Assign them and forget about them. And immediately the Munich Conference fires. Alright. And Hungary renounces Trianon. Ultimatum. Very good. Germany should be declaring pretty much immediately. So let's activate our spies. Yep, there they go. Right, let's join. Annoyingly, there is a big problem right now, and its name is Poland and Yugoslavia. Both of them are quite hesitant to join. And that means Germany doesn't have to do anything about those borders, but whatever, we'll deal with it. And Italy joined Germany immediately, because of course they did. 
But hey, we're fully prepared. So we'll be fine. Let's do this. Name and ratings go. Delete in the other orders. Now let's assign the rest. And there we go, big naval invasion. Anyway, land full. Activate force attack, let's break that cipher. Alright, we now just have to ensure a port at all costs. Should be okay, there's only one unit in Wilhelmshaven. And Yugoslavia's been called in, good. And we've made land full. So we'll summon the first 48 over. Now we just need to work on breaking out. We shouldn't be too hard, Germany is head smashing. Since we have some motorised and stuff here, we just need to make good advantage of it and try and get into the at this early stage of the war. So, motorised, hurry up. I don't think those units in Hamburg will be rescued, but oh well. Not much I can do. And the independent state of Croatia rose up. Hmm, might be able to get an encirclement on Bitburg. Right, with this third army, we should probably begin to do some naval invasions of their own. The front line is okay, but it is definitely precarious, shall we say. So let's go for Rostock. Gonna be more standard with this one, five units around it, and that should do. And yes, don't worry, I'll exercise them a little bit so they're not green. Because of Poland, the Danish Straits will be fine, we'll get access. And good. Now let's continue to push over the river. Any weak unit like this, can push away. And if the AI wants to attack when it really shouldn't be, that's even better. Go on, begin to break that cipher again. We're going to need to break it multiple times. Right, time for the next naval invasion. This naval invasion might be useful because Germany had to shuffle to cover it. I guess now must be the time for us to try. Well, that's unfortunate. That's going to be a big loss. But hey, at least it allowed the line to break a little bit. Germany just declared war on Lithuania. Lithuania re refused Memel. Oh my god, okay. Okay, that's quite funny. I haven't seen that in a long time. I'm not going to move the 5th Army's units into the main front line anyway. I know if I did, all it'd do is make our supply worse than it already is. So let's just do the exact same thing and pretend nothing happened. And Poland is finally in. Finally. That might just be the relief we need. Germany should be at breaking point. And in circle, two units. And those naval invasions will go as soon as they are ready. Oh, big breakout. Let's try and exploit that. And Germany's been cut in half again. Perfect. Looks like this naval invasion wasn't actually needed. Whatever. And Germany cipher again. Go. Nice. Right, I don't think we need naval invasions anymore, so ironically, yeah sure, those guys can actually join. Our next problem will probably just be getting to Vienna, believe it or not. So I'm going to try and potentially use the motorized to break in. We're almost at the gates of Berlin anyway, so it's going well. By every little bit of nonsense we've done, Hungary will help us since we are asking nicely. Our equipment situation is pretty critical, I can't lie about that. And Hitler's been assassinated as part of the Oster conspiracy. Now this is interesting. There are several ways this event can go for you. One, Hitler doesn't die. Two, you get this, it can be Goering or Himmler I believe who can leave Germany. And the third option, which is the rarest option, you get a German civil war. Now, funnily enough, in both of my practice games, I got the German Civil War. It is annoying, though, because let's be honest, it's you want the German Civil War because it's the best one. But oh well, nothing we can do about that now. Oh, we're about to cut off Germany with Let's Pig and the Czechs. Also working on Assault in Berlin. Has Vienna fallen? Yes! Good. Now it just basically means Berlin. Still, the motorites has done a very good exploitation of the German front line. Almost a uh, blitzkrieg. <laughs> and we just took Berlin. Vive la France, indeed. Only a few more percent to go. So probably something like Bitburg or Stuttgart. 
Come on. Three, two, one. Perfect. Germany has fallen. And Italy is the only one left. Let's take full advantage of this new gap in the front line and just rush them down. I guess this next step is Operation Seize the Front Line while we can. I'm going to use these small guys to pin. There will be no covering of this front line, Mussolini. The famous French march over the mountains will be this war's biggest story. Kitty Cat divisions are actually doing quite a good job. I guess it's because Italy was really stacking the um, Croatian front. Right, let's simplify this front line because it's an utter mess. 108 divisions all the way down to Palermo. But finally, 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 finally. Oh, not this one again. We're at 50% communist support. If this keeps up, they're gonna the communists are gonna win the next election. Oh, let's go for a big encirclement around Rome. Nice. It's not the biggest, but it will do. Alright, with that victory point, I think the war should be over. Yep. And here's what our casualties look like. Not the best, but considering we had to fight Germany and Italy, Italy I wasn't expecting to fight today, I'd call that pretty good. You could definitely do better if you invested more into tanks and casts, but for a pretty vanilla infantry push with some air, pretty good. But it's time for the peace deal. Alright, there's one thing we are going to have to do, and that is puppet in Germany. There's no way I'm not puppeting them. Annex them if you want, I don't want to. Same with Italy, actually. And maybe we could take some colonies. Oh, I'm missing a trick, aren't I? We can do cheap puppets with Germany. So let's take all states, untake the cheapest, and supervise states. And the same with Italy, because why not? I'm going to make sure Germany has the Silesian and Kabuja releasable states. Yeah, I think it's time to um, puppet Austria. I knew Germany would just annex them anyway in that event, but it's the thought that counts. 11 states for us, one from the UK, four from Yugoslavia, and the everyone was puppeted or annexed. Pretty good. And with that, we get the achievement Big on Taunt, because someone in our faction holds all German cores. And by that, it's Germany. You know what? Also though, since I'm so close to doing French Union, let's do that before we finish up. 70 days, why not? And yes, this isn't a Little on Taunt anymore. It's not even a medium on Taunt. This is the Big Little on Taunt. Who's up to no good? Yeah, Germany, I don't think you're doing around Maginot anytime soon. Although, funny enough, because they are a supervised state, eventually they will become free and eventually they will do it. Because there's no checks in the German focus tree if Germany is democratic or fascist or anything. There really should be, but whatever. French Union time. That was pretty good, actually. Our armies were fine, our naval invasions worked well. The only one that didn't work was the one around Rostock, but... I think in another run that would have been fine. Our main problem was really the fact that Poland didn't get called in, despite the fact, you know, they should have been. That should be changed, because I think Poland was waiting for, I don't know, 50% world tension or something? Well, if Poland came in from the start, it would have been so much quicker. Maybe we would have gotten the German Civil War. I don't know. But considering that we are French, I guess having a German puff hit is also a plus for us. Although we don't get any of their factories. Wish we did. And we also got Italy as a bonus. Italy, as I've said far too many times, didn't appear in any of my practice games, but we were prepared for them. The units that I had against them were more than enough to hold until Germany fell, and then we just rushed them down. Our main problem... Well, there goes Austria. So Germany got away with, got away with it, basically. Congrats, Conrad. Our main problem in the war, though, was definitely our stockpile. Our stockpile would be a little better if I wasn't training up more units, but we were very close to falling into deficit. But of course, as I showed in that war, we could have solved that with things like Lend-Lease. Hungary was good, the Soviets could have helped us. Hell, even our actual allies could have. 
But even then, it was never more than a few hundred bits of infantry equipment or artillery pieces. So I'd say we managed it quite well. Alright, which one of our colonies wants the honour of becoming French? To no one's surprise, Indochina said no. Syria said no. Central Africa said yes. West Africa said no. And North Africa said yes. Pretty good, two out of three. I can live with that. We definitely have to release though Indochina because resistance target is now being added by 100%. But this is where we're going to call this here. This has been a um, just a fun run as France. I don't really do democratic France that much, but honestly, they're pretty good. I'd say the Little Entente is definitely better than the Stresor Front, but that's only because right now the Stresor Front doesn't prevent Austria from being annexed. I hope that gets changed soon because if Austria refused Anschluss, I'd say it'd be alright. But this is where we're going to call it here. This has been me, Bubble Zest, playing as France doing the Big Entente achievement with the Little Big Entente faction. I thank you for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it. Feel free to leave any suggestions in the comments below, I'm always looking for new video ideas. However, until we meet again, good bye.